Agora TV. The world is thinking. So we started out May 31st last year from Seattle, long way to go. How do you get your mind around 28,000 miles? Well, you, I don't think you do, at least I couldn't. You do it a mile at a time. You do it to the next stop. You look ahead two or three. You see where you are with the schedule. Ocean Watch pounding to weather. Everyone in the world has reminded me that we went around the wrong way and before we left said, you know you're going around the wrong way, meaning you're against the wind and against the current. Everything is against you. And, and we wanted to go through the passage first. Going through the passage presents a number of challenges. We staged at Barrow, we got in Barrow, Alaska, anchored in the Chukchi Sea for a, two weeks actually, waiting for this ice to go away or open up. These are leads, the blue are leads. What happens here is a number of things. If we're trying to go from the bottom of the slide to the top, you can't just go straight. We're a steel boat, but we can't push ice or break ice. So you have to find a lead. You might have to go 10 miles back and forth and back and forth and back and forth in order to make a mile or two. And bear in mind all this is moving. About the time you find your lead, it changes. And then you get to the upper part of the image, and it isn't there. That's a mirage. That's a nice mirage. So. You know, it's, it's a game, you have 24-hour light, that's the only thing in your, to your advantage, really, and you're in fairly enclosed waters with a lot of things to dampen the waves, so it's usually flat calm. David Thorson spent most of his time in the Arctic up the mast. Here he is in some warm gear. We'd, uh, we'd send him a little glass of, uh, a, a thermos of tea from time to time, but that was it. He, he could see, because you could see, get a much better perspective of where we ought to go. So he's signaling where to go. I'm then trying to translate to Dave Logan, who's probably driving, what that means down here. And remember, seven-eighths of this ice is below the water. You can see a little thing here. We can't, any collision with that at speed would damage the boat and open it up. Um, you know, it's 3 16th steel, it has some abrasion resistance, but you don't want to hit it. This is in Barrow. There are a number of things happening here. The foremost bowhead whale expert in the world happened to be there. There was a bowhead whale that shouldn't have been there that close at that time feeding on what it was feeding on. He couldn't believe it was there. Bowhead whales, the happy news is, they were almost extinct 100 years ago. We had decimated them. We had used the baleen for corsets, um, taken the oil, and left the rest. Um, but they're coming back. But the interesting thing here is the water is less than 20 feet deep right here. So that bowhead's nose is probably on the, on the seafloor doing something. And it came by to welcome us to Barrow. George Devoki has been standing, it's been visiting this little island for 33 years. He's the guy right there with a camera, a gun, and you know probably other paraphernalia. The island is as flat and granular as you see it right there. These guys are the tallest thing on the island. We stopped to say hello because he studied the, black, the uh, Guillemont um, for 33 years. He's been keeping meticulous records, and he was noticing that, in fact, these chicks were hatching earlier and earlier each year. He was banding them. Um, he was noting who they were, they, you know, when they came back, all of that kind of thing. So he was, he was noting that, in fact, the climate is changing. Added to that was he used to live in a tent. Um, now he lives in a hut. Because the ice is receding and you know, going away, there isn't much of it, the polar bears are coming on shore, swimming onto his island, eating his subjects, and pretty soon they're going to get him. He's going to have to abandon this project because they're just looking for food. There's none on the ice. The ice isn't supporting the seal population, so they're coming on land. And, uh, you know, when we asked George if he believed in climate change, he sort of, you know, laughed and facetiously said, well, I don't know, but I believe in polar bears. After 27 years, he didn't see any polar bears for 27 years. They didn't come on the island, so something is changing. 